Hello friends, welcome back to this series on Snowflake Native Application Framework. Now in this particular video, we are going to take a look at the application framework in detail. We are going to look at the fundamental building blocks and how the building blocks talk to each other. Now this is a theory only session, but then I would sincerely request you to pay attention to this session as well. Uh, because if we don't understand the fundamentals well, it will be really difficult for us to connect the dots once we go over to VS Code when we, we see we, all the code artifacts. Now on the screen what I've done is I've put together a bunch of information from the documentation. Now if you're looking for a lot more information, please head over to the documentation. But um, whatever I've put on the screen is good enough to understand and have a firm foundation before we head to coding. On the left hand side, what you see is a bunch of key features of the Snowflake native application. And on the right hand side, what you see is a diagram which talks about the entire framework in totality. Now, it is very important to understand how Snowflake native application has transformed the way developers have been building, deploying and monetizing data applications. Now data applications were there even before Snowflake native application came into the picture. But then the way they were distributed, deployed and monetized was a lot more difficult. So let me take a pain and try to highlight what I'm trying to talk about. Distribution, deployment and monetization is something which has become seriously easy for any developer. You can, build a you can build an application once and deploy it anywhere. This particular framework has also come close to the data. What I mean is, whenever I was talking to customers previously, they were always very apprehensive about sharing their data outside their particular framework. But now they don't need to worry about that because the application is coming and getting installed on the customer account where the customer data resides and getting executed over there. The other angle of security is with the provider. The providers were also apprehensive about the security of the code that they were deploying on the customer end. Right now, the IP of the provider is also protected. The, the code that the provider writes is only executed by the consumer. The consumer cannot see the code units. That way, the IP is also protected. Fair enough. Let's look at the right hand side a little bit more. So here is the provider account and you have the consumer account. Now, the application package on the provider account is not only a combination of code units, it is also a combination of code and proprietary data. The provider is responsible for the licensing and the entitlements. What it means is once the application is published or listed onto the marketplace, the consumer can see it. Now, before the consumer can install it on the consumer account, the consumer will have to agree to the licensing entitlements. Once the agreement is done, the application goes and gets installed and on the application uh, on, on, on the consumer database or, or the consumer account. Now, this, this application logic which is there within the installed application can not only access data which is there um, local to the consumer, but it can also access external systems. Right? Now, how the consumer accesses information which is local to the consumer, how the consumer gets access to the proprietary data at the provider end, we will see all that in action when we go over to the video. Before we dive onto VS Code and build our first native app, let's look at the roadmap for the series. We will take one baby step at a time. We will start building a Hello World native application and deploy it using SnowSight. Once we are done, we will start adding a Python stored procedure. We will implement secure data sharing 
we will see how data can be securely shared between your provider and your consumer. We will build a version and we will add a patch to a version. A version can have multiple patches. Finally, we will add an automated deployment script. Now, building an automated deployment script is definitely optional. You can do everything with SnowSight. However, when it comes to multiple deployments, doing things with SnowSight becomes a little tedious. That is where the automated deployment script comes to your rescue. Once we are done, we will start adding a visual interface to your application. And that will be done using Streamlit. Now, Streamlit comes with some inbuilt packages. But oftentimes we have seen that a real world application needs a lot more libraries than which is available inbuilt to Streamlit. That is where we will see how we can build in an external library using Streamlit. We will also see how we bring in an external image using Streamlit. Once we are done with, with all these three steps or maybe three different videos, we will be all set to build a real world native application. We will implement machine learning in that appli application and we will deploy this in a consumer account. We will also create a private listing for this application and we will see how it is discoverable using your marketplace. Thank you and bye bye until we meet in the next video.